So in this example, we're being asked to find the area under the curve and we have to use integration. Okay, so you can see here that I'm given my function, which is a quadratic in standard form. So before you try this video, make sure you watch my previous video where I showed you how to find the area under the curve and we were dealing with the parent function of a quadratic, which is x squared. Okay, that will be a little bit simpler. Okay, so moving on to this one though, assuming you watched that previous one, let's go ahead and get right into it. So our first step here is we need to integrate our function in respect to x. All right, so for example, we need to integrate our function in respect to x. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 6, and we want to integrate in respect to x, so write dx, okay? Now, we want to find it on the interval from 2 to 4, looking at our graph, right? So in this case, our lower limit is 2, our upper is 4. So again, we're trying to find the area under the curve right here in green, all right? And again, it's on the interval from 2 to 4. And this is going to give us the area under the curve, all right? So what we must first do here is find the antiderivative of our function, all right? So again, going back to the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know the following. We know that x to the n is going to be equal to x to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1. So this is how we're going to find the antiderivative of our function, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So doing that, we're going to get x to the third all over 3, then we get minus 4x squared all over 2, and then we have a constant. So remember how I can rewrite this constant. I can write it like this, 6x to the 0 power. That is 6. But when I find the antiderivative now, it's a little more visual because I'm going to add 1, right, and then it's just over 1. So what happens now is I'm just left with 6x. Again, it looks like this, 6x to the first power over 1. So I'm going to get plus 6x. This is going to be the antiderivative of our function. Okay, so let me go ahead and write that right here. So I have x to the third all over 3 minus 4x squared all over 2. And why don't we go ahead and reduce this part right here. This is simply just going to be negative 2x squared. So we can go ahead and rewrite that. Negative 2x squared. Okay, and then plus 6x. All right, so there we are. So let's continue on with this problem. Let's go ahead and erase this. We have the antiderivative of our function. All right, so we're ready to move on. And if we want to find the area under the curve, we have to find the antiderivative of our function at 4 minus the antiderivative of our function at 2. So again, upper limit, lower limit, and we're going to subtract the 2. That's how we're going to get the area under the curve. So we're going to do this out by hand without a calculator. So first we'll find the antiderivative of our function at 4. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in a 4. So for example, I get the following. I get 4 to the third, all over 3, minus 2, and then 4 squared plus 6 times 4. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this out. Here we're going to get 64, all over 3. Here we get minus, well 4 squared is going to give us 16 times 2. That's going to give us 32, so minus 32, and then plus 24. So continuing on with this problem, we can go ahead and just combine these terms right here. This gives us 64 over 3 minus 8. And we can go ahead and combine these now. So I need a common denominator. So this is really over 1. Simply multiply your denominator and numerator by 3 here. So rewriting it, I get 64 over 3 minus 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 1 is going to be 3. So doing this out, I'm going to get 40 over 3. So the antiderivative of our function at 4 is going to be 40 over 3. Let's go ahead and record that. OK, 
hey, we're gonna do the same thing now at two. So let's go ahead and erase this, and then we'll almost be done. So again, same process, except now I'm gonna plug in a two. So here I get two cubed over three, minus two times two squared, plus six times two. This is gonna give me eight over three. This gives me minus eight, right? Two squared is four times a negative two, negative eight, and then plus 12. We can go ahead and combine these terms here. This is gonna give me positive four, so I have eight over three, plus a positive four over one. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a common denominator here. I'm gonna multiply both my numerator and denominator by three here. So doing that, I get eight over three plus 12 over three. Okay, let's go ahead and combine our numerators. We're gonna get 20 over three. So the antiderivative of our function at two is going to be 20 over three. So we are essentially almost done. So it's this. Just following our steps now, I'm gonna take the antiderivative of our function at four, which is 40 over three, minus the antiderivative of our function at two, which is gonna be 20 over three. When I do this, I simply get 20 over three. And I'm going to leave it as a fraction, okay? And we can write it as unit squared. So the area underneath this curve is going to be 20 over three units squared. Again, that's in green. So we just found that by using integration. Okay, and that is it.